All right, so here we are at the next stage, ready to kind of start pulling it all together and get everything finished up. So what we need to do is kind of define these a little bit, and then I want to add in some more interest here, and then kind of pull this water together with a little bit of details on it. Okay, so let's add a layer here, and then let's put just a little bit of texture. I'm going to grab one of those. Let me see here. So we've got all of our stencils here. I'm looking at these texture ones. And of course we've got the rocks that we could use. Uh, we've got our mountain one here and so forth. But I don't think I'm going to try. Let's look at some of these right here. Let's go with this canvas one. Put that back off. Just because these can give some interesting kind of a look. I'm going to try the um, pastel and grab a little bit of this kind of color back here. Scrape that in a little bit. Grab just a little bit of that black. Real lightly. And then a little bit of this other color that we use for the shadow. Again, real kind of lightly. And then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to right click and drag up just slightly. Move the stencil off a little bit. And let's look at this wax crayon here. Because we don't play, I don't, personally, I don't play around with the pastels enough like I think I should. So I just pushed four, and I'm going to use my left bracket key to drop that down. And I'm going to lightly smudge this. And I may not like this, you know, this is just the point where it's kind of good to play around. I'm going to press spacebar to drag this down a little bit so I can see it a little more. And keep some of this texture here. I'm going to hit backspace to get rid of that. And so I've got some interesting texture there now with that. Okay, so now I can, so I can freehand this if I want to. I can come back over to my brush, so my knife brushes, and grab like the soft palette knife, and just kind of alt and grab that. And go along the edge here, kind of soften that back, and same here, alt, pick it up, kind of come up with space bar to drag the canvas, gray lilac, and just give a couple of quick strokes kind of indicate some high spots these are a little too bright for the rest of the stuff around here smudge these back a little bit with four kind of soften it period, kind of pull it back a little bit, take a look. So yeah, not too bad. And you can push and pull these as much as you want to. And this is one of those things where you could bring the, um, like the rock, the mountain, one over top of it if you wanted. And I do recommend going into this and turning off lock ratio so you can kind of stretch it, pull it. And I had somebody ask, which I may have mentioned, I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier. Um, somebody asked, you know, why do you use stencils? Why not just paint this and stuff? 
Well, you know, again, it saves time, first and foremost. Um, it um, gives you some flexibility to kind of play around with stuff. But also, stencils do allow you to build up texture that, honestly, you could develop a custom brush to do. But for the most part, because we are working with a digital brush, we just can't get with a digital brush. I mean, let's be honest. You can't drag a digital brush over a digital canvas like you can a real brush over a real canvas or a palette knife over a real canvas and get it to the paint to break like you could. So that's part of the reason why I made these is to get that similar effect like I would if I was dragging paint with a palette knife. Like so. See, so I can get that, that look. And so I can get that. And I mean, when I originally painted these, I painted it using the lasso tool and some other stuff and, you know, messing around with some textures from photos and um, the lasso tool and stuff like that and twisting it and turning it and smudging it. Speaking of smudging, I'm just going to soften these back into here a little bit. Um, and so now by using these, I'm able to quickly do the exact same thing. And there's some people here that are part of uh, my audience, be it on Patreon or YouTube or whatever, they're people who are intimidated by drawing. And so they, you know, can't, um, they don't have their artistic ability yet to draw. You know, they get intimidated by it and they just won't create. And so why not give them some tools that can help with that? You know, and if you think that's cheating, well, first of all, show me the rule book. That's what I always say. Show me the rule book. You know, second of all, um, you're wrong. <laughs> it's just that simple. There are a ton of ways that people have used and tools and stuff that people have used throughout the ages that um, people have considered cheating. You know, it's like if you consider it cheating to do this, well, then you shouldn't be doing digital artwork. You should be mining your own pigments and making your own paints. Um, you know. It's just the way it is. There we go. So that gives us that nice kind of a feel. And again, I'm going to hit four and just kind of smudge these to soften them back. Normally, if this was on a canvas, I would just take my finger and probably smudge these and soften them just like so. Okay, so I think that's going to seat those. I'm going to come back in a little bit and add some shadows and stuff to it. So now I want to add some more grass to kind of push this back a little bit. So I'll just create a new layer on top. And we're going to grab some of this grass here. And then I'm going to click here. So that's that color. And we're just going to drop down just, you know, a little bit there. Go some darker like so, and we can grab the pencil or the pen. And if you grab the pen, make sure the water is all the way down. And use the left bracket to bring that down. And then what you're going to do is just start laying these in, in front of. And this is really where you want to just kind of loosen up and do that. Now there is um, on the which one is it? Is it yeah here right here. So this one has it does kind of this rough brush here. So if you want to use this to kind of scrub in a little bit first to lay in some of this stuff and see how you get some of these rough stuff and then you can come back and do this kind of here. Okay. So it'll save you a little bit of time. So 
It's a great way to add in some texture. And because we've got this on this layer by itself, you can come in and add it. So if you get an overlap, then you can just come back and erase it. But by having some of this here, it's just going to allow you to really seat this in there like so. And then you can come back, you could push five and go to the eraser and just bring, use the left bracket to bring it down and then just kind of erase it back. And then you can, the reason you can use this is that you can then use the strokes to go down and you'll leave streaks so that, see how it will then leave you blades of grass. So it's just another way to do it. Okay. And then from there, all you got to do is you can go back to your pen tool. Oops, I left my eraser on. That's fine. And you can just kind of, and I'm just trying to keep these kind of, for the most part, going the same direction as this grass, because if that grass is kind of being blown that way, then this grass would probably be blown that way too. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. And then once you've got some of these in here, you can add some, go back and grab some of this grass and just kind of add a few here and there. Like so. And that will start to just kind of tie it all together. See? And then grab some of these that are sitting down in it. And that'll push some of those back and some of those back and so forth. And see how this kind of blends them all and gives them that seeding into where they're at. Okay. Come back here and kind of do some of these. Just kind of, this is just a real grassy, overgrown, you know, and now we can also come back into here, like with our brushes, and go back to like the uh, the bush one here, and maybe like we want to add, you know, some um, oops, bushes. That one's a little too dark. Maybe we want to add up here, and maybe up in here. We can just kind of erase it back. You can add a few here and there, and then it'll just kind of break up some of the silhouettes. And you can even add some, you know, grab again some of this stuff in through here. And it just again kind of breaks up some of what you're seeing. Gives a little interest. And it starts to kind of tie it all together like so. And some of this right here, like that's a little interesting to start with transition. So just push four and kind of smear it around with the same brush. Alright. And so this over here, I'm going to kind of give a little bit of these. Grab a little bit of that off color. I'll kind of help pull some this around. And again, if I put these over here and then push four, I can use that paint to kind of smear it around a little bit. And I can even bring it up in size and get a little bit different. So it just kind of helps bring it back around. Okay. But that kind of helps give the feeling of undergrowth and scrub and all that kind of stuff. All right. So we've got that there. And then one of the other things is, is pulling this together for the water here, because this water is just a little too bland. So I want to add just a little bit of ripples and stuff to it. So this is the water layer right there. Oh, sorry, that's the mountain layer. Water layer is right there on the layer that says water. 
So we'll go here. And then in the water stencils, we can grab this one. And again, turn off lock size ratio. Just kind of bring it out. I'm going to go ahead and border it, which is one of the things I love about it, Rebel. And I'm going to grab uh, this color here. And I'll go ahead and use the airbrush. Just kind of lay that in there a little bit. Too much. I'm looking at my preview window. That was a little too much. So let's bring the opacity down some. And just kind of soften it in there. A little better. I'm going to go to the smudge and just kind of smudge it around, which will soften it more. Okay. Now I'm going to view. Try to remember where this is at real quick. I'm thinking there's a hide stencils while we're working it, but I may be thinking of a different program. So I'm just looking real quick to see if that's here. Pretty sure there's a hide stencils. Almost positive there was. Well, I know there's the keep stencils active when hidden. Sorry, guys, I haven't used this before, and so I'm trying to remember where it was. Even I have lapses in my memory for where stuff's at. Well, I won't worry about it right now, but if you ever get stuck, go to Help and click F1. That'll bring up the, the manual for it, so I won't bore you with trying to stay here right now. To do that, I can just simply do this. I can come over here, move this from here, Activate the stencil, delete it, the color, alt click, and then I can do control Z to bring the stencil back. Because all I wanted to do was just grab that and just put in a little highlight right down through here in the middle. And then I want to grab, so I can do it again. And then this, and then do Control Z, and put it back, and then do a little bit of darkening along the shoreline. And then press 4, smudge it down a little bit, so let me get rid of it. And now you can see how that kind of changed it. Now I'm still on 4, so I'm going to just kind of soften this vertically like so. A little too streaky. There, that's a little closer to what I wanted. All right, so now I've got a little bit more of a highlight coming down through here and through there as well. I'm just going to go on four, just cross horizontally to soften that ever so slightly. That gives me just enough of a uh, movement to it, I think, to be kind of what I want. Hit the space, the uh, point to come in there. Check my layers real quick. OK. 
Okay. I'm looking at this rock slayer. I don't know that I like these rocks right here. So I'm just going to control click and think I'm going to grab a little bit of this color and just slightly airbrush these back a little bit. Yeah. There we go. I think that pushes them back a little bit better. Something like that. Okay. All right. So I think that this kind of pulls everything together, f you know, for the, the way it looks. You can definitely push this a little bit more, but we've got the clouds kind of softened and pulled together, the trees. This is where you could start adding in some different, um, you know, icing on the cake, if you will. And one of the things I think I would like to do is maybe um, right here in the foreground is maybe add in some uh, maybe some flowers to the front and just something, um, you know, maybe just some random uh, impressionistic flowers kind of thing. So I think what I'm going to do in order to do that, I'm actually going to about using maybe just the stars or something I may even use these pebbles so again I've said before you don't have to use the stencils for what they are you know so I'm thinking about kind of messing around with these And maybe grabbing something that is just a little white. And maybe, just maybe, we'll go with something chunky. So right now that's too much, but that's okay. So something maybe like that. And then let's invert. And then let's put this on race oh, that was a little too much and I may need to totally do this a different way but I just wanted to play around with this and show you guys that you can definitely play around this is how I sometimes find some of the, my favorite thing techniques is by doing this. Um, let's see. Don't like that. So I'm going to go over here to the watercolor brush and let's look at spatter. Oh, yeah. Because it's not opaque enough.
right, so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of come in here and draw some circles using this brush. But because I'm doing tight circles, that's going to give me what will look like a bunch of petals. And then I'm going to increase the size of the brush and the circles I'm drawing as I get closer. Now the main thing here, I have to be careful to not fall into patterns. So I'm just going to, as quickly as I can, do this so I don't let myself, and I'm really not even looking, I'm just kind of throwing in the patterns. I mean throwing in the petals so I don't hit a pattern. And I just want to kind of clump them here and there. But if I hadn't done the others, the other way of trying it, I don't know if I would have liked it. Okay. So that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. All right. So I'm going to throw in a few more here and there. Some smaller ones. And maybe grab blue. Throw in some... I always like blue in these wildflowers. Just random make this real real small just kind of go and tap in some here and there And then come back and maybe grab this and put in a few clusters because that'll just kind of help pull it together. Let's see if I can add a few sprigs here and there of randomness. Things like that. Don't be afraid to come back over here and do it. A little like baby breast looking things. Stuff like that. And then come back and hit the dry. Just in case there is some water there. Like that. Try the layer. Okay, cool. Have some red, a different spatter. Stuff here and there. Kind of livens it up a little bit. Even maybe, maybe a little cadmium yellow. Just a few, a few shots of that here and there. Heck, why not? Maybe not just a little orange too. Fact, I think I would like and maybe this pencil. Maybe just throw a little bit in some of these. Just for a little fun. Okay, so I think that's going to kind of wrap this one up. Um, the only other thing I would say that you maybe could do, which you've seen me do this before, is add another layer. Uh, you could change it to multiply. 
come up here and grab like the plain air. And if you wanted to grab the airbrush, opacity down to maybe eight or something like that. Increase it. Drag this up a little bit. Maybe kind of come along the edge here. I may need to bring that up just a little bit. And kind of come in along the edges. And some of these areas through here. And just ever so slightly add in a little bit of that. And that's going to give you just a little bit of a vignetting. Ever so softly. And then you can add another layer. Change it to overlay. And then come over here to like maybe this Naples yellow. Or if you wanted to keep the color harmony, go with something like what you've got here. Then you can come down. And maybe grab something like the paper. That may be a little too stark. The opacity down. And you can bring in some hot spots here and there. And where you want there to be a little, a little bit of interest. And then once you've got it there, just hit four and kind of soften it back. And then you can hit five and just kind of erase some of it away. And it can be a great way to just to add some subtle but interesting lighting to it and you can play around with it more as you want to all right so i hope you guys have gotten something out of this i hope you enjoyed this uh, format of breaking this up into these uh, different ways of doing it and looking at it so that way you can kind of take your time going through it as always if you have questions about anything just let me know and i'll see you in the next one